The Grumman X-29 emerged in the mid-1980s as a radical experiment that aimed to challenge conventional aerodynamics and redefine the future of aviation. Seemingly defying the laws of physics with its striking forward-swept wings, the first ever jet fighter to use this unusual configuration, it almost appeared to be flying backwards as it soared through the tense Cold War skies, sending a clear message to the Soviet Union that the United States would continue to lead the way in aeronautical innovation. While the forward-swept wing has not been widely adopted, the X-29's creative approach to aerodynamics, groundbreaking use of composite materials to provide strength while reducing weight, and its break from traditional mechanical flight control systems in favor of a sophisticated fly-by-wire system have influenced generations of fighters' jets into the 21st century. The development of the Grumman X-29 project began in earnest in 1981 as part of a collaboration between the United States Air Force, NASA, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. While the 1970s saw a period of improved relations between the United States and the Soviet Union, known as détente, by the end of the decade, things had started turning sour once more. When Ronald Reagan was elected as U.S. President in 1980, he made it clear that he did not take the communist threat lightly, investing heavily in defense as part of the renewed arms race. At the time, the Soviet Union was working on advanced aircraft such as the MiG-29 and the Sukhoi Su-27, both designed to match or exceed the best Western fighters of the day. Determined not to let their great rivals get the upper hand, the United States began seeking an unconventional response that could provide a strategic advantage in any potential future clash. Their attention was drawn to the idea of a forward-swept wing, believed to enhance maneuverability and improve aerodynamic efficiency. The concept of forward-swept wings was not entirely new. During World War II, the German Luftwaffe experimented with the Junkers U-287. First flown in 1944, the aircraft had demonstrated some of the theoretical advantages, but the structural limitations of the materials available at the time prevented further development. Other examples of early forward-swept wing aircraft included the Cornelius XFG-1 glider, a derivative of the Bell X-1, an experimental variant of the Douglas D-558 Skystreak, a preliminary design by V. Pete Sibben, and an American P-51 Mustang version that was ultimately not pursued. These projects didn't even make it to the air as, once more, the necessary technology and materials to prevent the wings from deforming under the pressures of aeroelasticity were not yet available. More successful was the Hansa HFB-320, a small commercial jet with forward-swept wings created in the 1960s by the Ju-287's designer, Hans Wach. By allowing the wings to be placed further back on the fuselage, this configuration gave more space for passengers in this otherwise cramped aircraft. In the 1970s, as the development of composite materials would allow for the construction of a robust but lightweight airframe, the United States decided it was time to resurrect the idea for a new jet fighter, with initial studies and conceptual work on creating such an aircraft beginning near the end of the decade, with the aim of assessing the viability of this type of design. However, it wasn't until after Reagan had taken office that the X-29 program was formally approved. Renowned for its innovative designs and engineering capabilities, Grumman Aerospace Corporation was selected as the primary contractor for the X-29, and was granted $87 million to proceed with the design and construction of two prototypes, thus marking the official start of the development phase. Work began on the first prototype at Grumman's facilities in Bethpage, Long Island, New York in 1982, eventually being unveiled in August 1984. Presenting the aircraft to the public for the first time, Grumman President George M. Skirla said, quote, it is a significant milestone in Grumman's history and further evidence of our continuing commitment to expand the frontiers of manned flight. The X-29 is a means to investigate in flight new technologies that could point the way toward future generations of aircraft which are more agile, burn less fuel, and cost less to maintain than any tactical aircraft flying today. 
The Grumman X-29 measured 54 feet in length, stood 14 feet tall, and had an empty weight of 13,800 pounds, with a maximum weight of 17,800 pounds. It was equipped with a single General Electric F 404GE 400 engine, achieving a top speed of Mach 1.87, a range of 348 miles, and could reach an altitude of 50,000 feet. The X-29's famous wings, which had a span of 27 feet and a total wing area of 2,032 square feet, were swept forward at an angle of 33 degrees, much more than any previous aircraft that had experimented with forward-swept wing designs. By configuring the wings this way, the airflow would move inwards towards the wing root rather than outwards towards the wingtips, thus helping maintain attached airflow over a larger portion of the wing especially at high angles of attack and ensuring more consistent lift distribution. This would enhance the aircraft's control and responsiveness during extreme maneuvers, allowing the aircraft to perform tighter turns without losing stability. Moreover, the pressure distribution across the X-29's forward-swept wings would also help maintain laminar flow over the wing surface for longer periods, delaying the onset of wingtip stall and therefore improving safety and handling. For pilots, this would translate to a more reliable and agile aircraft capable of performing advanced aerobatics and complex flight patterns with greater precision and confidence. While the X-29's fuselage was made of either aluminum or titanium, its wings were constructed from advanced composite materials, primarily consisting of carbon fiber reinforced polymers such as graphite and epoxy. These materials combined high strength with low weight, enhancing the aircraft's performance and maneuverability, while their flexibility helped manage the aerodynamic stresses of the forward-swept wing design, reducing the risk of structural failure. Additionally, the composites improved aeroelastic stability, minimizing wing deformation under aerodynamic loads and ensuring better control and stability during flight. The excellent fatigue resistance of the composites also increased the wing's durability and longevity. The X-29 incorporated an advanced electronic digital fly-by-wire flight control system which was triple redundant, meaning there were three independent and parallel systems in place to ensure reliability and safety, so if one system failed the others could take over, reducing the risk of a catastrophic failure. This flight control system helped enhance the aircraft's stability and manage its inherently unstable forward-swept wing design, replacing traditional mechanical control systems with electronic signals and allowing for faster and more precise adjustments. The system made up to 40 adjustments per second to the aircraft's control surfaces. Forward canards positioned ahead of the wings instead of at the tail served as flight control surfaces, mainly for pitch control. This pitch control was also managed by strake flaps located on each side of the rudder, a feature that would become more prevalent in later fighter designs. Conversely, roll control was handled by flapperons, which are a blend of flaps and ailerons that adjust the wing's camber. The rapid commands given to the control surfaces were necessary because the forward swept wings, while providing superior maneuverability and control at high angles of attack, also made the aircraft naturally unstable. Without these constant adjustments, the X-29 would be difficult to control and prone to aerodynamic issues. This artificial stability allowed the X-29 to exploit the aerodynamic benefits of its wing design while maintaining manageable flight characteristics. It enabled pilots to handle the aircraft with precision and confidence, performing complex maneuvers that would be challenging or impossible with conventional control systems. Using such an advanced flight control system represented a significant technological achievement and provided valuable insights for the development of future aircraft. Another notable feature was the external mounting of the wing trailing edge actuators, which controlled the camber and streamlined fairings. This was necessary due to the thinness of the supercritical airfoil, a design first developed in the 1970s with the F-8S. The supercritical airfoil, flatter on the upper surface than conventional designs, was used to reduce the intensity of incoming shockwaves, theoretically resulting in a significant decrease in drag. 
Additionally, to save costs, the X-29 utilized the undercarriage from the F-16, featuring anti-skid tires and carbon brakes. Its fuselage and nose wheel were sourced from two F-5As, one of which had previously served with the USAF and the Norwegian Air Force. After completing routine taxi tests in September 1984, the first X-29 prototype was stripped of its F-404 engine, wrapped in a protective blanket, and loaded onto a transport ship at Bayonne, New York, before sailing through the Panama Canal and on to San Pedro, California. From there, it was taken to Edwards Air Force Base, where it took its maiden flight on December 14, 1984, with Grumman's chief test pilot, Chuck Sewell, at the controls. Sewell and other evaluators discovered that at moderate angles of attack, the airflow over the forward-swept wings moved inwards rather than outwards, preventing the wingtips from stalling. These accident-free flights highlighted the effectiveness of the stabilization measures designed to manage the highly unstable forward-swept wing. Test pilots consistently reported excellent handling characteristics, with Sewell even requesting permission from ground control to perform a roll. Four months after its inaugural flight, the X-29 entered a NASA test program, quickly proving its reliability. By August 1986, it was regularly conducting research missions lasting over three hours, often completing multiple flights in a single day. Notably, the first X-29 didn't have a spin recovery parachute, as the tests were carefully planned to avoid maneuvers that could lead to uncontrolled flight, such as spins. This approach allowed the team to focus on gathering valuable data while ensuring the aircraft's safety. By 1989, the second X-29 was ready, taking to the skies for the first time on May 23rd that year. While the first prototype had primarily been used to prove the basic concept of forward-swept wings and evaluate the aircraft's general flight characteristics and handling, the second was specifically focused on exploring high angle of attack performance and the potential military applications of the forward swept wing design, particularly its maneuverability and control at extreme angles. Indeed, where the first X-29 had been operated up to a 21 degree angle of attack, the second expanded this envelope, being ordinarily maneuverable up to 25 degrees with a maximum angle of 67 degrees achieved in a momentary pitch-up maneuver. The second prototype was given a spin recovery parachute providing extra safety during these riskier tests. The X-29's maneuverability and control proved to be highly impressive, outperforming the computational model's predictions. Pilots noted that at 45 degrees it maintained excellent control characteristics, and even at 67 degrees it still retained some controllability. This outstanding performance was attributed to its forward-swept wing design. Furthermore, the X-29 achieved effortless control without needing the leading-edge flaps on the wings to provide extra lift. Additionally, the movable vanes on the engine's exhaust nozzle, which could change the thrust direction, were not necessary for these conditions to be met. Between 1984 and 1991, the 2X-29S performed 242 flights, carving out a reputation for itself as a futuristic fighter jet that combined new technologies with the new uses for existing ones. By 1989, its fame was such that it even became the star of its own video game, F-29 Retaliator, a flight simulator that imagined a combat-ready production version of the aircraft with an array of advanced weaponry. By 1991, it was considered to have achieved its research goals, successfully demonstrating the feasibility and advantages of forward-swept wings while also validating the use of advanced composite materials and fly-by-wire technology to manage the inherent instability of the wing design. With its main objectives achieved, continued funding for additional flights and maintenance could not be justified, especially when resources were needed for other emerging projects and technologies, and the program was brought to a close. Meanwhile, the Soviets had learned of the X-29 project not long after it had begun. Determined not to be outdone in the highly competitive Cold War arms race, they had started planning their own forward-swept wing fighter, the Sukhoi Su-47 Burkut. 
Though the program had begun in 1983, the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 led to significant budget cuts, and the Su-47 did not take to the air until 1997, long after the X-29 program and the Cold War had come to a close. In the end, only one prototype was built before the project was cancelled. Since then, the idea of a forward-swept wing aircraft has not been revisited. Although this configuration was shown to have interesting results, it also had some major drawbacks. Significant aeroelastic problems could cause the wings to twist under aerodynamic loads, leading to instability and potential structural failure if not properly managed. The materials and engineering required to counteract these forces can be complicated and expensive, and the benefits of forward-swept wings have not been deemed significant enough to outweigh the costs and complexities involved. However, both the Su-47 and the X-29 have left a lasting legacy on aircraft design in their respective nations and beyond. The lessons learned from these projects, such as utilizing aerodynamic design to enhance maneuverability at high angles of attack and using advanced composite materials to reduce weight and improve structural integrity, have influenced the designs of production aircraft such as the United States F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, as well as Russia's Sukhoi Su-57. Whether or not we will ever see another forward-swept wing aircraft in the future remains to be seen, but in any case, the impact of the groundbreaking X-29 project will surely continue to be felt for many years to come.